This is an important motion that I'm proud to support, and I thank my colleague, Mr Pedersen, for putting it today. It goes without saying that people who identify as LGBTIQ are valuable and equal members of our community. This should be reflected in our laws, our institutional frameworks and our social norms. We each have a role in achieving this, but none more so than the government. Madam Speaker, let me read you a list. All these nations have something in common. Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, Canada, South Africa, Norway, Sweden, Portugal, Iceland, Argentina, Denmark, Brazil, France, Uruguay, New Zealand, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, United States, Luxembourg, Colombia. All of these countries have legalised same-sex marriage and next month Finland will join their ranks. Their governments have listened to their people and have done the right thing. They have recognised that no one should be barred from this important civil institution because of their sexual orientation. It is simply a matter of equality and respect before the law. Meanwhile, in Australia, our federal government is out of step with the majority of Australians. It refuses to listen, instead choosing to dither, delay and, in some ranks, outright oppose. For however long this continues, Madam Speaker, I am proud that the ACT government will continue to make our own position on marriage equality clear and continue to lead the way by updating our statute books to, remo to remove discrimination, offering support services and programs to the LGBTI community and promoting attitudes of acceptance in our society. Progressive legislative changes in the ACT reflect and respect our diverse community. In recent years, we have reviewed our statute books and made amendments to remove provisions that were discriminatory towards the LGBTI community. We have also updated the definition of intersex and broadened the circumstances in which intersex people are able to formally change their legal status. We legally recognise same-sex relationships and civil partnership legislation means that same-sex couples are treated the same as married couples under territory law. Just yesterday, we further broadened the criteria for civil unions by passing laws which amended the Civil Unions Act to allow the automatic recognition of formally recognised overseas or interstate same-sex relationships. This is a timely change, as the demands of work and family and graces of online communication mean relationships now frequently cross borders. Such social changes should not unfairly prejudice LGBTIQ relationships. Madam Speaker, I am equally proud that we continue to speak out against federal bills which will further entrench and institu institutional and social exclusion of the LGBTIQ community. In our submission to the Federal Senate Select Committee on the exposure draft of the same-sex marriage bill, we have advocated for a free parliamentary vote on marriage equality. Australians support a free vote on marriage equality, and so do we. In the ACT, we have made other changes so that LGBTIQ people can participate fully and freely in civic life. For example, we all need to show banks, employers and schools our identity documents from time to time. These documents should accurately reflect our gender and our families, regardless of our sexual orientation and gender identity. Bureaucracy shouldn't be a roadblock to the LGBTI community officially documenting their gender identity and family relationships. That's why we allow intersex, transgender and gender diverse people to have their gender identity officially documented. We also recognise interstate parentage orders, give parents greater choice as to how they are referenced on a child's birth certificate and provide flexibility in documenting name changes. These are practical steps that have a real impact. We have established the Office of LGBTIQ Affairs as a central point within government for coordination and engagement with the LGBTIQ community. 
We also continue to send a strong message of acceptance and celebration by actively supporting LGBTQI public events and activities across Canberra, such as Spring Out. As we brighten the city with rainbow today, we send a message we hear echoed from around Canberra. We celebrate our diversity. Very importantly, the ACT government has also shown leadership by stepping in to fund the Safe Schools program here in the ACT. School can be a social minefield for anyone. For youth who are figuring out their gender identity and sexual orientation, it can be especially tough. It's critical that these youth feel supported to self-determine and are free in their self-expression without fear of bullying or harassment. We are bolstering the support networks in our schools and funding early intervention and prevention programs to educate all of our youth about LGBTIQ issues. We are also conscious that, for our young people, it's the day-to-day -day things that can make a big difference in the classroom and on the Oval. The Education Directorate is currently revising the uniform policy, procedure and guidelines after receiving advice from the LGBTIQ Ministerial Advisory Council on more inclusive policies. We also support the Play by the Rules and Fair Go Sport programs to change negative attitudes and promote inclusion in the sporting arena. We want to convey to all of our young people that when it comes to sexual orientation and gender identity, there is no right nor wrong. Our LGBTIQ friends, family and colleagues deserve acceptance and respect. The ACT government fully supports the LGBTIQ community and is committed to fostering equality at every level, from grassroots initiatives through to our schools, governance structures and legislation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Ramsey. Madam 